Welcome to Hartman Math. Today we're going to look at the binomial theorem. A little practice on sums, arithmetic, geometric. Uh, go ahead and work through both of uh, parts A and B here to our warm up. Pause the video here, come back when you're done. All right, number one is arithmetic. We know that because it's an A uh, equals MX plus B situation. So that's going to lead to uh, an arithmetic sequence. So the formula. Uh, S sub n is equal to n over 2 times a sub 1 plus a sub n. Uh, if we start our count at 2 and finish at 12, that means there's going to be 11 things we're going to add up. First one, plug in a 2, we get the negative 2. Last one, plug in a 12, we get the 48. Add them up, you get 253. Uh, part B is geometric. It's an exponential expression, a times b to the power of x. So we're going to do that one as a geometric. So S sub 11, again, 11 things adding up. First one, plug in a 2. So negative 2 squared is 4 times 5. So our first term in this sequence is 21 times 1 minus negative 2 to the power of 11. Close parentheses. Be real careful with your parentheses there. And then 1 minus negative 2. And we should get 13,660 for that sum. All right, this is lesson 9.5, the binomial theorem. Uh, so if we have a binomial that's being raised to a power, we can expand this out in a certain way. Now, if this was maybe squared, I would just definitely multiply it out. If it's cubed, it might be just as efficient just to multiply it out. But anytime you get to an exponent of four or higher, this is definitely going to be one, a time saver, and two, we're going to probably be more accurate, and there's less opportunities to make mistakes. So it says there's some combination number that we'll kind of take a look at, times x to the n, times y to the zero, and then the next one is another combination where the x exponent is going down and the y exponent is now going up, and so on. Okay? So a couple things. We'll look at this as a combination. We'll see how on a calculator we can do that. Uh, and then this is some different notation. It's kind of, uh, say, older notation, uh, where this is a little bit more modern notation. Uh, but this also means the same thing as this. All right, so let's go ahead and kind of do this on a calculator. Uh, so just find the binomial coefficient. It's a combination of 11 items, and we're choosing four of them. So how we would type it into a calculator is on a graphing calculator, you're going to press, uh, on a Texas instrument, you're going to press the, uh, the math button. So we're going to get that started. Remember, our problem was 11C4, so type in 11 first. Then we're going to press math. And once again, probability. And there it is here, our option number three, NCR. Type in the four, enter, we got our answer, 330. All right, go ahead and try this one. Remember the notation here, this just means the same thing as 6C0. So we're going to type it in like that, 6, the NCR button, 0, and you get 1. All right. Next we have Pascal's triangle. So we've got the first few rows. Now technically this one, for whatever reason, doesn't really count as a row. We say this is the first row. And then we're going to go on to the second row. Uh, this is Blaise Pascal. So each row begins and ends with a 1. In the middle, to get this 2, we would add the 2 that are above it. So 1 and 1 makes 2. So if we want to add another row, we're going to get 1, 3, 3, 1. So as you can see, each successive row after that, there's one more entry, one more number in the row. 
So see if you can maybe do the next two rows. Pause the video here, generate the next two rows in Pascal's triangle. One, four, six, four, one. One, five, ten, ten, five, one. Notice that there's some symmetry and so on. So again, we would say that this is row five. Again, the first one is a count, row one, two, three, four, five. What we can see here is this is 5C5, 5C4, 5C3, 5C2, 5C1, 5C0. Or you can run, run it the other way. 5C5, 5C4, 5C3, 5C2, 5C1, 5C0. Either way, these are the numbers in Pascal's triangle. They are combination numbers. So we can either use the calculator or we can use Pascal's triangle. What's going to happen is if we're raising a binomial to the fifth power, this is the row that we're going to use, and these are all the initial coefficients. We'll get to that in a second. All right, example number four, expanding a binomial. Here we go. Like I said, this one, it's pretty iffy whether, you know, just doing x plus 2 times x plus 2 times x plus 2 is going to be faster, or this is going to be faster. This is kind of the threshold for anything more than that is definitely going to be faster to go this way with our binomial theorem. But this is good practice, good introduction. And then you can see that the, um, we're probably going to be more accurate this way, less places to make a mistake. So each one of these, each term is going to have three parts to it. It's going to have a combination, it's going to have an x part, and it's going to have a, a y, y part, or a part and a b part. So we've got a is the x, and b is the positive 2. So our expansion. We're going to start with, if you did it from Pascal's triangle, that's great. We're going to do this as combinations. We've got row three here, essentially. So we're taking combinations of three. 3C3 three three to start times the A, which is X, to the power of A is going to start with that exponent. And then we've also got our Y part. y part, which is the b part here, Oops. should be positive 2, my error, uh, positive 2 there, uh, that starts at an exponent of 0. So there's our first term, all of them have three parts to it. Plus, now we move on to the next term, 3c2, as that one drops down, times x to the second as that exponent drops down. And then 2 to the first, as that one goes up. Plus 3c1 times x to the first times y to the second. plus 3c0 times x to the 0. I keep making the mistake on the y. 2. 2 to the third. All right, so that's the setup. There's four terms in total, and you'll have one more than the exponent is how many terms you're going to have. And each term is made up of three parts combination or Pascal number, the A part, the B part. So now we can go ahead and just kind of simplify. Uh, if you did it on the calculator, 3C3 is 1 times x to the third times 1 plus, and that's 3 times x squared times 2 plus 3 times x times 4 plus 1 times 1 times 8. So for a final answer, x to the third plus 6x squared plus 12x plus 8.
there's the expansion. Example number five. So this one is definitely one where with the fourth power, this is going to be our more efficient method. So again, let's identify A. B is negative five. So writing them out, we've got 4C4 times 2X to the fourth times negative 5 to the 0. Plus 4C3, 2X to the third, negative 5 to the first. So if I can squeeze this all in plus 4c2, 2x squared, negative 5 squared, plus 4c3, whoops, 4c1, 2x to the third, negative 5 to the third, whoops, yeah, that's a mistake, 2x first, and last, 4c0, 2x to the 0, negative 5 to the 4. All right, so we've got 1, 16x to the 4th, times 1 plus 4 times 8x cubed times negative 5 plus 6 times 4x squared times 25 plus 4 times 2x times negative 125 1 times 1 times 625. If we simplify all of our terms, 16x to the fourth minus 160x to the third. Hopefully, my mental calculation there is right. Plus 600x squared minus 1000x plus 625. And done with example number five. And example number seven find a coefficient of a specific term in the expansion. So you could expand the whole thing out, but we could save some time and not do that. So with this one, we got x plus 1 to the power of 9. So we kind of got to think in terms of we know that there's going to be three things to this. We've got, again, our a part, which is the x and the B part, which is the one. And we're gonna get X to the fourth from the A part. And the exponent for that's gonna have to be four. Which means for the B part, since those two exponents for the A and the B would have to add up to be the nine, that would have to be five. And then our combination number, 9c, and then you could pick either one of those, the 4 or the 5, because of the symmetry. So 
there's the A part. 9C4, and then we're left with the B part, 1 to the fifth power. So our coefficient is going to be this number times this number. So that's 1, so it's really just the 9C4 in this case, and we would get 126. Let's do another one of those. A, B, okay. So we need to get again x to the fourth power. Which part, the A or the B, is going to lead us to those x's? Clearly it's the A. Now, what exponent would the A be raised to to get to here? It's not 4. Because if we raise this to the fourth power, we're going to get x to the eighth. I want to get x in the fourth, so it's going to be 2. We're going to take the a and raise it to the second power, which means that our combination number, our Pascal number, is going to be 8c2. And then the b part to it, the negative 3, needs to be raised to the, well, if that's a 2, and that's an 8. This is going to have to be a 6 is those two have to add up to be that. So now as far as our calculation, find this number, multiply by 2 squared, multiply by negative 3 to the 6th, and we get 81,648. That's it for today. I will see you next time.